<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Musky Road Rules Podcast, episode number 237. Guys, thanks for tuning in, thanks for telling your friends, and you know what? We love having everybody listen every week. This podcast tonight is brought to you by Red October Baits. Guys, not only do they make some of the best and most versatile lures in the business, the tubes, by the way, both in the 7.5, 10-inch, and the big 12-inch models, they also are really, really good fishermen. You know, Mark Arena and Hans Mann, I'm telling you what, do a great job out there both making baits and on the water, and I think it's pretty freaking awesome, the stuff that they're making right now. Making in three different styles, either a deep jigging rig, a mid-depth rig, which I personally like, and a shallow casting rig. Guys, check them out at Red October Baits on Facebook. Just do a little search there. I know Mark puts up a ton of colors. And, uh, yeah, why don't you find some of those? I think you're going to like. On the podcast tonight, we've got Christina Truppi, uh from up in Wisconsin. Christina, where are you from up there? Um, I live about 20 minutes north of Manaqua. 20 minutes north of Manaqua. Did the snow finally leave? Uh, it did. I, I actually spent uh, most of March and April down south so that I didn't have to deal with it, but I think it's gone. Nice. Well, that's uh, that's a good thing. That's one reason why I don't think it. One of well, several reasons that I don't want to live way, way, way up north uh, all year. I like it in the summer. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's it's worth it for the summer and the fall up there. Oh yeah, yeah, it's really really cool. And also we got on the line Austin Wiggerman there in Northern Illinois. Austin, how are you doing? I uh, couldn't be much better, honestly. Yeah, it's definitely we definitely didn't have the winter that. Uh, that they did up there and certainly haven't seen winter in a while today was the first cool day you know a low 60 degree day in a while it's been freaking warm down here so bite's been good and couldn't be happier yeah it's uh it was cool here too we had big storms yesterday or not giant storms by any mean but had some thunderstorms move through it only got up to in kentucky into the 70s um, which, you know, we had been hitting the 80s pretty consistently. And uh, so our water temps now are in the low 70s, upper 60s, uh, still not real, real hot. Um, water's getting really, really super clear, and the fishing has been, that's been so-so. We've been getting fish a bunch of different ways. It seems like the vertical jigging bite, the bondy bait bite uh, has been really, really good. Uh, Christina, I know you've been fishing a lot, um, especially in the, uh, southern part of the state. Can you give us an idea of how it's been going and, um, you know, what you've been doing? Yeah, sure. Um, so my first day fishing Wisconsin opener was last Tuesday. Um, water temps were around 49 and I'm out right now and they're 59. Um, so we've been fishing, um, like I said, a river system in southern Wisconsin, and we've just been targeting shallow flats, um, current seams, and we've been finding a lot of big fish doing that. Well, so now you're fishing a river system. So now is that dark water? Because I know in Wisconsin and, and in Minnesota and a lot of the northern lakes um, or the northern systems, uh, the rivers show up a lot darker because um, in the south right now they're getting really, really clear. Um, yeah, so it's this river system's always pretty stained, especially in the spring when you have all that water running through. Mm -hmm. Do you have any high water, or is it is it seem to be pretty normal? Or I mean, because I'm assuming you guys are getting the warmer weather too, so you're going to have snow melt uh, and all that. And I <coughs> I would assume that that um, causes the the levels and stuff to go up. Yeah, so I heard um, about a month ago there was some flooding. All the dams were open, but now it's it seems like the water level is pretty much back to what I'm used to it being at. Sure. Well, that's a, that's a good deal. So how has fishing been? I mean, um, I've seen some pictures that you've posted and stuff, and they um, look like you've been, uh, to put it bluntly, kicking ass. So yeah. what? Uh, been an been? insane year so far. Um the windows have been super tight, so we've either been finding fish, I would say, like, within an hour of peak, and if there's not a window then, we've been hitting sunset, um, and there's typically a window there, too, but fish have just been swallowing swimming dogs, and we've been throwing little crankbaits, and 
What the windows kind of are tight, the, but when what, they're on, they're on. What kind of little crankbaits are you throwing up there now? Because in the south, we throw a ton of crankbaits, and sure. I think it's always something that is is pretty. You know, uh, you, you don't hear of a ton of crankbait stuff being thrown up north. It's you know a traditional bucktail topwater jerkbait. What uh, right. what are you? What kind of little cranks are you throwing? So slammer. I think last year it was their prototype, but this year it's officially out. They have their six inch fatty minnow. Um, okay. and I've caught a ton of fish on that this year so far. All right. Just, are you runs, doing it runs perfectly. Sure. Are you doing a straight retrieve or you you like stop and go or or what are you doing? Um mostly like a rip and a pause. Okay. Um, now, those how deep down do those baits get? Are we talking? I mean, because uh, river system now, are we talking deep or shallow? Have the fish kind of been relating to like the eddies uh, and and stuff like that? I mean, are are you fishing really high, or are you having to get baits near the bottom? So I've been fishing, I would say, in the like upper two feet of the water column. Obviously, the faster you rip it, the deeper it's going to run. Sure. Um, but earlier this year, we were fishing super shallow. And trying to find weeds and just kind of rip it really softly o- across the top of those weeds. Yeah. Okay. Well, good uh, Good deal. Austin, how's it been for you? Last time I seen you, was it at the sushi bar where I took my shirt off? Yeah, it absolutely <laughs> was. And that was that was one of those nights that I will absolutely never forget. You know what? The sad thing is it's not the first time I've taken my shirt off at a sushi bar. Um, I wish I could say, <laughs> I, say I wish I, I could say like it was I the only one little influence on it. Just cause I was, I was advocating for you to buy one of the sushi shirts, more sake, more happy. Yes. And, and I, and I still got it, it came, somewhere. Yeah. When it came, you decided you wanted to put it on right that second. Well, I didn't want to embarrass. I, I didn't want to, uh, insult the people from our, our, uh, other nation <laughs> there. And I, I thought it would be a great gesture of, of of me wearing their native clothing and i i think it went it went well um but i, I don't disagree at all <laughs> exactly the only thing that i uh i do remember is at the end of the night i i you know i i the next morning i look at my credit card statement and i go oh boy that got a last night got a little expensive <laughs> Yeah. More, more sake, more expensive. <laughs> oh, it was, uh, oh my God. But it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. It was, uh, there was a group of, I don't know, there was a lot of people there, and I think I made friends with a lot of people. Or Everyone I, made there, a, I, think. I made an impression, at least, I think. Um, anytime <laughs> people see my nipples, they get impressed. So <laughs> I, uh, I, I do enjoy that. So, Austin, enough talk about my nipples. What is going on in northern Illinois? Are you catching any fish, and, and how's it going? It is, uh, it's going tremendous, I will say. Um, you know, again, it was one of those early seasons where in previous years, like three years ago and beyond it was an incredible april bite and i was looking forward to nothing more than guiding the pre-spawn bite and again this year it was almost non-existent where you basically didn't see any fish with your own eyes water was super dirty and they graph fouled all day and that was basically the most excitement you had but uh now that they are basically 100 percent through spawn things have been Quite well. We got water temps anywhere from low 60s to upper 60s. Uh, seen 70 once already, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of the only weird thing that I have noticed, which I you know I've talked to a few other people that have uh, somewhat disagreed with me, but it seems like when the start of the the moon phase happens, all of the fish that I've been fishing around just go sit on the bottom for the whole moon phase, and the second that it ends we start catching and seeing again. So I don't know what's going on with that. I've kind of, it's been one of the uh, like opposites kind of year. You're just like not looking forward to moon phases to help you whatsoever and mm-hmm. kind of wasting your time feels like. But um, other than that, it's been great. Uh, basically every bait's been working. Blades are starting to really turn on. We had a pretty wild top water window last night. Um, and uh yeah, it's been it's been good, but fish are through spawn and uh, fishing certainly certainly picking up. How uh, did you get anything uh, really big this spring in Northern Illinois? Yeah, we got uh, we got a forty seven and a half. We got a uh, couple of mid forties, and they were actually I guess technically pre spawn. They were still had a, a few eggs, but water temps were already in the low sixties. Sure, um, which we had some crazy water 
water temp uh, rise falls already this year. We, I mean, I think, I want to say already over a month ago, we saw upper 60s for a while, and then they went back into the upper 40s with that first giant warm front that came through. But uh, water clarity is cleared up, which I know I enjoy. We got a crazy green bloom going on. But, yeah, we uh, we certainly lost a few really big fish. The last full moon was, was pretty insane. Good buddy Sam Stone came down from uh, Wisconsin, um, we were on some really large fish that basically didn't make me want to leave uh, Illinois for the Wisconsin opener. So we uh, we got a couple small ones, lost a couple of basically right at the uh, 50 inch mark for the old Illinois fish, which is uh, quite impressive. And it was a little bit of a depressing weekend, but now things are uh, they're just a lot more consistent. The windows are way longer. Um, like I said, the, the moons haven't been quite as influential so far for me, but, um, fishing throughout the whole day has been lots of action and big fish are cert- certainly, uh, certainly chasing baits. So you're saying the moons haven't been beneficial for you. So, but you're saying the fish have either, they shut down, you know, for what you're doing or, or is nobody, have you not heard anything really happening around the moon? I've talked to a few guys on the water just passing by that they had some action during moons and so so on and so forth. But literally, I have had one follow in the last two weeks during a moon phase on on the Fox chain. Well, that's yeah, that's always and fun. Uh, it yeah, it is. So I mean, actually, I just know when to take lunch now, and uh, it's been it's been one of the weirder things, I will say. But uh, any. The windows for me have been right away at sunrise last night. Uh, sunset was, was pretty wild, and yesterday's weather that came through went from uh, basically really calm winds and sunny to a giant uh, switch out of the northeast to, like, 25-mile-an-hour winds, and it was just the fish were just going nuts for the whole rest of the night. Wow. But we've uh, we've we've got a few bites after dark. We've been fishing into the dark already, which has been great. Always love that around uh down here with the pressured waters and it's uh full swing finally. It was a long April. Um but I'm uh I couldn't be happier. Like I said, they're doing everything on every bait, so it's it's a good time. Nice. So uh Christina, did you guys get a big weather change here? Um, well, today it's colder than it has been for the past couple of weeks. Um, we're still getting down into like the 40s at night, but overall it's been like 60s, 70s. It's been pretty nice in southern Wisconsin. Nice. Well, that's always uh, that's always good. Well, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask this question to both you guys. What would be, so of the spring so far, what you fished, what's been your three top lures? Christina, you start. Um, I would go with, um, Meg Swimming Dog, um, the six inch fatty minnow by Slammer. And, uh, I would probably just go with the regular Swimming Dog for my number three. I'm obsessed with Swimming Dogs. I've caught so many fish on Swimming Dogs. They're like the best baits on the planet. Well, uh, that, hey, then that's, that's good because you know what? Muskie Innovations is a sponsor of ours. Brad Rue, the man can't grow a head of hair, but he can definitely <laughs> make a musky lure. So, guys, yeah, check him out at, at muskyinnovations.com. You've heard it from Christina. Uh, the Swimming Dogs has probably been one of the, one of the best baits that they've turned out. <laughs> Or most catching, you know, for what I like about them is they're very easy to work. They're easy. You can give them to anybody, um, Mm -hmm. throw it out, reel it in, and the fish just eat them, which is something that's really, really nice to have that can be worked in a ton of different situations, whether it be in shallow weeds or or deep off of break. So, guys, check them out, muskyinnovations.com, and uh, they make all kinds of baits. Now, Austin, what, uh, what would be yours? You know, I always do love that you put us on the spot with the uh, specific baits because I can tell you tomorrow on the Fox Train there will be multiple boats throwing these baits. So I, I thank you for that. No problem. <laughs> um, Shallow Mag Dog has been quite uh, quite ridiculous, honestly. I haven't, uh, for whatever reason, I've been on the Deuce Train for years. Um, this year, pulled out a Shallow Mag Dog. Uh, I don't even know what color it is. It's like a I think it's an eel pouch. I think it's one of my very few shallow mag dogs that I own, honestly. And it's been uh, it's been pounding fish. Um, that classic hellhound has gotten it done almost every day during that pretty 
sharp spawning phase. Um, for whatever reason, I, I have put phantoms to the side slightly, and that uh, a little bit of a deeper body profile seems like it absolutely hammers on the uh, shad base fishery mm -hmm. uh, for here for the fox chain. So mag dog, shell mag dog, hell puppy, and what would be the third? I would probably say it's been kind of sporadic, but I would say in the last five days, the the shallow invader. So there's another musky innovations plug there. Oh my that gosh. Is, uh, that's, that's been pounding for, no, actually that, that brings up a good point. Do you, do you guys, which I know for a fact you do, but down in cave run, do you guys have any, have you seen anything with pre-spawn versus post-spawn fish with the shallow invader? Like one or the other liking it more or less because i cannot get a fish to eat it during pre-spawn on the fox chain but the second they're done spawning it is like every year it is a staple um the you know i've caught them on both you know i mean it was always a good bait in the um it was always a good bait in the early spring for me when i was casting now i do a lot of short line trolling early um but when we do cast it is a bait that i reach for but I will say, you saying that in the river, um, below the dam and the actual river, uh, the shallow invader is one of my go-to. I just have somebody throwing it at all times, um, and I really, really like it. Another thing that we throw down here is the deep invaders, which um, I don't think he makes anymore. Normally, they're the dusty bait that's like hanging in the corner of the tackle shop. Um, you know, it's kind of the land of misfit toys. You'll find a... Uh, a deep invader, a, an old high fin, and um, something else that um, someone's uncle made out of skunk. And that is what you'll, you know, and, and, and the deep invader. Have any of you two ever used the deep invaders? I haven't. Yep. You have? Okay. Well, I tell you, the deep invader, I got a 50-inch fish last year um, on, a, on a deep invader. And, I mean, down here we've just caught a lot of fish on those baits um over the years and and they've been really really good but the one thing is with the shallow invader we were talking with uh uh cody daniels from down in tennessee a few weeks ago about putting an extra split ring on the back hook to make those hooks go back further uh and you know pinning it into the tail and that's something that i've done and i find to work really well christina do you have any luck do you those shallow invaders is that something that you like or have you not really got into those um i do a little bit but it's it's not something that i reach for very often um i do like the action of the bait though it's just it's not one of my go-to's sure sure um austin on yours are you are you putting that hook back and if so um what's your uh technique for that i'm just using that stealth hook extension sure or, or just making my own um, yeah, cause that is, that's like the only downfall of the bait is straight out of the package. If you're ripping that thing at all, it was get caught all the damn time. But other than that, I'm just using that, that hook extension. I was actually somewhat thinking of trying a few with like the extra split ring and seeing how, how long it took for them to get, uh, caught up cause that hook extension's great. Never, uh, never seems to have any issues. No, no. I think it's a big thing by getting that hook back there, um, back there a little bit. Now, Christina, you mm -hmm. are, is this the first year you're going to be guiding? Officially, yes. Officially, um, yes. We won't talk about it when you are unofficially doing it. <laughs> um, no, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Um, and now I just, I finally have my life set up to where I can do it. I live in the right place. So I'm looking forward to it. What's it like to have your life set up really good? Because I'm scared. <laughs> that is yeah, something no, I, I have something strived. Out, but. I have strived for that, and I literally am the most unorganized. Just I, I'm like Pete, I'm like the, I'm like Peter Pan. Uh, what? Uh, so, <coughs> where will you be doing this at? Um, mostly up in like Vilas and Oneida counties, um, close to home. But I might do some trips in Central Wisconsin too. Sure. I don't know. It's tough to leave the Northwoods once that opens up. It does. I I, I agree. I mean, it's. You know, the PMTT this year, we're not going to do um, up in Eagle River. And that was always a great trip for us. Um, mm -hmm. When I say us, I'm just people that don't live up there. Uh, because I just the beauty of it, it, it you, you feel 
musky-ish. <laughs> you know, you go in a bar and you you see old musky stuff on the wall. You see some decrepit guy in the corner and you find out he used to be a musky guide. And I think I'm looking in a mirror. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that I just in the future. Yeah, I'm the future. Exactly. Anytime I see a guy like stopped at the corner with like a sign, uh, you know, looking for change, I'm like, well, there's my future. Uh, that's, uh, so, so I always give them water. Um, the, um, you know, it, it is a great, great place to go. So Christina up there, what are some of the lakes that you're going to be fishing and targeting? Well, I can't tell you that. Oh my god! <laughs> what, what, Come on, Greg. What, that seems unfair. I only have one lake that he asked about, and now you can't even give him one. <laughs> yeah, and he asked you before we were actually on the podcast. So oh that's that's gosh. true. But now everybody knows the three baits to throw on my one lake. That is true. <laughs> that's I don't. That's, I fish way a lot to go, of Greg. Them. A lot of the lakes in St. Germain, Boulder Junction, sure. Manitouche Waters, Presque Isle, even up into the UP a little bit. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah. So you're you're covering a lot of lakes. So like, how many lakes do you think you cover in a in a given season? Oh God, I don't know. Maybe thirty. Maybe oh, more. Jesus. See, my you know, I would have the the good thing is I'm medicated now, so my nerves would let me do that. Uh, if I had that many choices, I think I would go absolutely insane. Uh, yeah, in- it, well, it is insane. I have a list going in my notes in my phone to, of lakes to fish this year, and I think it's up to like forty-two or forty-three. Oh my! So God. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'll fit them all in, but it's, it's just cool to have so many options. Sure. Well, I mean, that's like you know, I grew up in the south. I grew up fishing here on Cave Run, and and you know, our closest other musky lake would be two hours away. Uh, right. there's only three in the state and then what we've got rivers, um, 17 rivers in the state. So I get to fish them a little bit, but most of these are like John boat rivers, like right. you know, just find a place where you can throw a boat in and hop in, uh, it's, it's kind of how that works. And then in Minnesota where I am in the fall, um, I got about four lakes, three, I probably fish consistently. Um, and even on those, I'm like, Oh, where should I go today? Where should I go today? Um, right. and, and a lot of it's based on wind and, uh, how much gas I have. Um, it, uh, you know, there's you know, the big decisions. Um, <laughs> and then, but you know, fishing Lake of the woods this summer, which I'm, I'm super excited about doing out on the Northwest angle, you know, that's like fishing a bunch of lakes because of so many options to go, um, right you know up there but what are your so your summer how is it looking right now i mean are you are you booking some trips and um how's that looking for you um so i i think i posted about my guide business like maybe three weeks ago and i already have over a dozen trips booked so i'm i'm a nurse and i do travel nursing so my last my the contract that i'm in right now is in wausau and that'll be done at the end of July, and then I'm just going to guide and fish for about four months and then pick up another contract in December. See, so I'm hoping to book, like, maybe two trips a week and then just have my me fishing time on my off days. Oh, my God. That sounds wonderful. I don't yeah, get any I'm, me time. I'm very excited. <laughs> I need me time. I don't get me time. It's I important. I know. I, I it's look, me time for you, Greg. What? It's always me time for you. I don't know. I look in a mirror and I I try to do the affirmations and it's just horrible. Now the dogs are biting each other's face. Oh my God. I have no me time. What, um, so what are you up there this summer, Christina? You, uh, how long have you been fishing up in the North Woods? Um, my whole life. I think my dad put a rod in my hands when I was in diapers. Good they have, guy. um, my parents have a cabin in St. Germain. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would spend a bunch of my summers going up there and fishing with my dad. Well, that's, uh, that's great. What is like in the summertime? What is, cause we all have the, I, I think we all kind of have our favorite way to fish the way we like to fish. Um, mm-hmm. what's one technique or something or one way to fish that you really, really, um, look forward, look forward to every year? Uh, I think blades over deep weeds in the summertime is huge in the Northwoods. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's really like how my dad fishes mostly. So that's how I grew up fishing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say that's probably my favorite. 
Well, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. I, I'll ask you the same question I asked Austin. Uh, you know, this uh, this spring, I've seen some pictures. Looks like you've been getting some nice fish. What are some of the bigger ones you've gotten this spring so far? Um, so down south, we got a bunch of mid forties, and then since southern opener in Wisconsin, I have a. Uh, Two forty fours, three forty sevens, a fifty one and a half. Oh Finally got a fifty plus in my boat last week. It was insane. All right, tell uh, us about that. Everybody's got a story about the first fifty incher in their <laughs> boat. I mean, mine was actually that I caught. Um, it was on a figure eight. I can still. I'm closing my eyes right now. It was on a Grim Reaper spinner bait on Cave Run. It was misty. It was. Uh, it was uh, quite a lovely setting, and uh, got on a figure eight right at the boat, and it was fifty one and a half as well. So oh, how nice. how did your uh, the first fifty inch in your boat go? So I didn't catch it actually. Um, Nick, Mister Musky Frenzy, caught it. Bastard. I got to net it though, which was really cool. I know, <laughs> but I can't even be mad. My boat saw a fifty plus inch in the first week of opener, but nice. um, he caught it on a swimming dog, the orange belly perch. Um, and it hit like way out on the cast too. And right away he's like, this is a giant. And like both of us saw the head come up out of the water and we were just like, no fucking way. Like <laughs> we were both shaking. Nice. Well, I tell cool. you what, uh, uh, <clears throat> I mean, and, and you're fishing true Wisconsin waters and, and a 50 inch fish is the benchmark for everybody. And you know, that's pretty, that's pretty awesome that you're able to, you were able to get one. Uh, this early in the season um yeah were the fish sure. pretty Not a bad start <laughs> no were the fish pretty beat up i mean are you seeing fish that are just um you know pretty cut up so it was obvious that some were post spawn um but like last week one of our 42s dropped eggs all over my boat mm -hmm. um so i think i think now a lot are post spawn um but last week we were definitely seeing a mix of both clean fish and beat up fish Okay. Well, we're in Kentucky. We're seeing a little bit of everything, too. It depends on where you're at uh, on the lake. Um, some fish are still spitting eggs, and some fish are, are pretty beat up. Austin, what uh, – now, you said you've been fishing – you fished Lake Geneva a couple times? Yeah, I've been out there twice. Um, but actually, I want to throw in there, for the first time ever, I got to see with my own eyes two, uh, two actively spawning on the fox chain the other day, which was – Last time I, I had not seen, um, sorry, one just surfaced right next to the boat and I'm pointing it out. <laughs> um, uh, all right, where the hell was I? Oh, I'd never seen that before. Like actually two just paired up together, um, uh, spawning, but it was probably only four or five days ago. And it was, the one was really big and the guy's like, Hey, there's two in front of us. And I was like, cast. And he's like, no, they're on top of each other. And I'm like, Oh wow. Well then leave them alone. <laughs> but um yeah on, on geneva um i would say we probably have another two full weeks to get through that um wind's been pretty fairly consistent and on uh when i was out there i want to say three four days ago um the one side of the lake was 48 degree temps and the other was 63 so well, that's consistent we got, uh, yeah we're super consistent but uh that that lake is just so damn deep and there's just so much base into it that it's going to take a little while, but I would say uh, a few fish that we caught were just small juveniles, no marks at all. But I would assume that they probably did not um, even either start or are going to spawn whatsoever. But, yeah, there's uh, there's already been a handful of big fish caught that I know of. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there, but I'm going to ride this fox chain for probably another another week or two um, in and out because it's uh, it's really going. What was that? <laughs> my dog i was gonna say which which dog is that one <laughs> there's there's a little dog running around on shore and he doesn't do so well with things like that my dogs they do not like <laughs> they they think they're gonna my dog my dogs scare the hell because english bulldogs um the the big one th scares the hell out of people because they think oh he's gonna eat him literally all he wants to do is be friends with I don't care if it's a dog, a squirrel, a porcupine, it don't matter. He wants to be friends with it. And 
So it's the same thing, except he'd just be growling and trying to get it, and it's just because he wants to be friends with it. But he's super inappropriate because all he wants to do is sniff their butt. Um, <laughs> he is – that is his – that's his go-to move um, is is sniff the butt. And, uh, yeah, the most of the dogs really aren't – they're not they're not too receptive on that. So <laughs> – but now, oh God! Now they're barking. Um, but uh, yeah, Austin. All right. So what, Austin? What is your plans right now? What is uh, um, going to happen to you? I'll be around here. I'll be mostly on Geneva, um, starting here soon. Like I mentioned, uh, all the way through June. Then come July, I'll go out uh, where you're kind of uh, spending the fall. So we'll probably uh, trade off spots there about the end of September. Um, but yeah, Detroit Lakes area. Um, a little bit south Miltona, I'll be for the vast majority of summer, all Ju- June or July, August, and then uh, half of September. And then uh, I'll be doing some trips on, on Leech as well. Um, and then back on Geneva for the rest of fall, since uh, last fall was extremely uh, fun. And I am going to get away from the boating traffic and probably 85 degree temps that come around this area. Exactly. The dogs are fighting. The uh, the little one just sat on the big one's head. Well, that That's didn't work out well. Um, what? Um, so, um, Christina, are you going to be fishing anywhere else this year? Are you going to try to go to Canada or anything? Or, um, so I'm starting my four months off with two weeks in Canada. Oh well, that's horrible. <laughs> What's that? I said, oh well, that's horrible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've actually never been up there before, so I'm looking forward to that. And then I'm hoping to get over to Minnesota maybe once or twice this fall. Um, but aside from that, just northern Wisconsin and the UP. Where are you, where are you going to in Canada? Uh, Lake of the Woods. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. So I might see you out there. If you see a guy with a blue boat with binoculars, it's, I'm just trying to get spots from you. So <laughs> don't, uh, don't pay no mind. The best fish finder in the world, binoculars. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, pay no pay no mind to that guy. Um, but uh, all right, though, that'll be fun. You'll you'll have a good time there. Are you going to go, like, what, what time of year? Uh, the first two weeks of August. Oh, okay, yeah. Bucktail, top water. Be a lot of different ways you can catch them, and uh, it'll be uh, it'll be really, really, uh, it'll be really, really good. But uh, yeah, all right. So this is a question I've been asking everybody. Uh, I got two questions actually. What got you in to musky fishing, Christina? Um. Well, my dad was a, still is a huge musky fisherman, and then. Uh, like my grandpa was too, so I think it's just in my blood. Cool. Sorry, I'm drinking a margarita because I'm a man. Um, that sounds good. <laughs> um, I've had one too many of them. Um, Austin, why? What got you into musky fishing? Oh my god, you dogs! Gosh, that seems like a long story, but you know, I think uh, it was it was kind of just the inevitable ending of the fish species. Uh, progression of catching bass and bluegills when I was young and kind of catching enough five pounders at the uh, local golf course ponds to, to go around and then pike and muskies were uh, kind of the end. And once, uh, once I caught my first one, it was uh, game over. Didn't want to catch anything else. And that was about it. Nice. And uh, <clears throat> another question here. And I try to ask people, do you listen to music in the boat, Christina? Yes. Okay. Top three or four musky fishing songs. <laughs> I don't know. I just shuffle my iTunes. All right. Um, so, so on your iTunes, like, what are like, or do artists? You know, it could be artists. Uh, I like '90s country. Oh my god, that is great, Garth Brooks. Back when the men had mullets, that yeah, exactly. Is exact- like, I've always good said country. that. I like. I liked I like Blake Shelton. I like Blake Shelton with a mullet. Old Red. That was a great yep. song. Blake yep. Shelton now, horrible person. Uh, yeah, not so much. Toby Keith, good with a mullet. Billy Ray Cyrus, much needed mullet. Actually, <laughs> I watched a movie the other day, and I recommend everybody listen to this podcast watch this movie because it is one of the worst movies I've ever watched, but I love it. 
It's called Bait Shop, and it had Billy Ray Cyrus, and it's <laughs> about a bass fishing tournament. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. You've seen it? And Billy Ray yeah. Cyrus wears a sequence. What do you call that? A jumper? I don't know what you would call that. It, it, it like pajamas? And, I, and, yeah, I wouldn't and, know. <laughs> and Bill Ingvall is in it, which I hate. I think Bill Ingvall is one of the worst comedians in the world. But that movie, what Bait Shop, it's on Hulu, Amazon, one of those. Uh, but watch it. Uh, watch it with your family. Sit around the fire. Uh, it is absolutely horrid but awesome. I don't know why we're talking <laughs> about that. But, Christina, three mm-hmm. artists that you like to listen to in the boat. And if one is Aaron Tippin, I will hug you. Um, I do like Aaron Tippin, but I really like I like Alan Jackson. Oh, Chattucci. I like Garth Brooks. Yes. I like old Tim McGraw. Old Tim, like yeah, Tim yeah, like, Kershaw. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah Indian Dickey, Outlaw. Stuff like that. Yes, I do not like Tim McGraw, like, you know, later on. and um, No, he's so different now. It's horrible. What was the yeah. song? Um, um, something Taken in Fishing. It was about the boy Johnny and the Daddy. girl. Huh? Johnny, Johnny Saddy. That one. <sighs> yep. That was good. And I'm assuming you probably like uh, Kenny Chesney before, not Beach Kenny. I was never a huge Kenny fan, but some of his stuff is okay. Some of his older stuff is okay. Yes, like Keg in the Closet and uh, Boys of Fall. Those are great. Those are fire. Yes, exactly. All right, Austin, what would be you? So give give me like your, you know, what are you listening to? Are you listening to like gangster rap Lizzo? I could see Lizzo coming from your boat. You you think I listen to Lizzo? You think that's my my thing? Oh, I do sometimes. Lake of the Woods last year, we did a whole Lizzo day, uh, and it was awesome. Um, you know, I'll be honest. I really don't follow like that many people all that closely. I just like good songs that I like. You know, um, I would say the only artist that I could really give would probably be Mike. Um, Mike Period. He is, used to be formerly Mike Stud. Uh, that's a whole whole other story in itself. He's like Who? he's like a it's his name on like Spotify or Apple Music is just Mike with a period after. It used to be Mike Stud. He was like a Duke pay, baseball player, rapped on the side, had to have like a name that the baseball coaches didn't know cuz this guy sounds horrible. Reasons, Christina, back me up. But no, here. he's uh he's got really good music. I do, I do not believe that. I I <laughs> think you would be you would be genuinely surprised. Yeah, that I'm listening uh, to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's like if if uh, if he had as big of an ass as Lizzo, he would be just as famous. Really? Yeah, and actually, I don't even know if Lizzo has a big ass. I don't even know what she looks like. To be frank, Lizzo, <laughs> she is the poet laureate of our generation. Um, what? Uh, all right. So who else? Give me three. Um, I I don't have three. I mean, Morgan Wallen. I'll just like get on the bus with love that but other than that don't have a third artist my god do you listen to music when you fish uh yeah the whole time but i just like like uh, christina i just got a playlist with a shitload of songs from over the years and just shuffle i'm afraid to hit shuffle on my phone especially when i'm fishing with clients because I, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I usually <laughs> ask them for like a like a, a spotify uh, channel you know and then we shuffle that and and then they're responsible if something weird comes on yeah, because my, my stuff is like, I mean, I listen to literally everything. Um, and so I have to, I don't do that. I always do like, you know, I got my standards. I got my Tyler Childers. Um, we always get some Tyler Childers during the day. We always get a little Sturgill Simpson during the day. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, a, a new band that I really like. It's not a new band, but it's new to me. Uh, Suitcase Junket. Really, really good stuff. Um, what kind of music is that? Suitcase Junket mm-hmm. is um, it's kind of like rocky country, not like new country, but it's like uh, old. Hold on one second. Would you two quit it? Okay, they don't listen to me. Um, the uh, it, it's like um, gosh, I'm trying to kind of southern, not really southern rock. Just look up Suitcase Junket. I think you'd like it. 
Um, do you like Tyler Childers? Yes. Okay, so if you like Tyler, Suitcase Junk, it opens up for him a lot of times. Oh, cool. Yeah, they, they open up, uh, he opens up for him quite a bit. And it's a guy, he makes all his instruments out of trash. Um, he makes his all, all his own instruments, and it's like these really weird guitar things, and um, but he's really, really good. So check out Suitcase Junket. Um, I just I listen to a ton of different stuff. That's the that's the main thing for me. And I just I'm always curious to hear what people listen to in the boat because you know I like everything from rock to metal um, uh, to, to old school country. You know, like right now I'm looking at my phone. Here's like the um, my most recently added. I've got Aqualung Jethro Tall, Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot. Uh, I've got Zach Bryan, um, a bunch of his stuff, Coulter Wall, Suitcase Junket, Alanis Morissette, Jagged Little Pill, um, The Beatles Essential, um, Plastic Heart, Miley Cyrus, Noah Cyrus, which is her sister. She's actually pretty good. And Mermaid <laughs> Avenue by Billy Braggs and Wilco. So, and... Uh, and oh, and uh, the next one is uh, Slayer, Rain and Blood. So um, yeah, that's so, a variety. Oh, I've got a ton, and it's all awesome. But um, well, guys, I tell you what, I appreciate you coming on here. And guys, before we get off, I need to tell you we've got a new text line. Um, so guys, put this in your phone. Put this in your phone right here. I got. I'm going to make sure I give everybody the right number. This is the Musky. Um, I was going to say Musky Road Rules, but it's the Lunge and Lures text line. Lunge and Lures, guys, check them out, lungeandlures.com. You're not going to find a bad bait that they make. All of the 22 series and their crank baits, the big old 50 cals, uh, and the Alley Cat series of lures, guys, you're not going to find a bad bait, plus the Nut Buster and DC uh, series of, of uh, bucktails. Check them out. But the new number, guys, is 502 502- nine seven seven four 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 six all right so that's what you want to text me at text me at 502-977-4446 guys make sure you do that on the lunge and lures text line uh christina anything you want to promote um just my guide service i suppose all right let's have it uh, so people can either look me up by my website, which is Christina Troopy Musky Guide Service dot com, or they can shoot me a message on social media. And that uh, is it under the same name? Uh, yeah, just my first and then my last name. I didn't do business pages for those. Okay. All right. Austin, you got anything? Same deal here. Uh, website is Austin Wigerman Guide Service uh, and. You can call me or text me, 815-575-3468. Got a handful of June dates left on Geneva, and then certainly have openings in Minnesota for any western uh, or west, north, central Minnesota. So that is uh, good for me. Have you tried the urinal advertising that I've No, but I did hear that 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 worked out really well for you. It does really good. Anytime you have to go to the... Anytime, you know, you're on a trip up to Minnesota, about every 30, 40 miles, uh, stop at the restroom, take a Sharpie, go in there, just do a little, you know, <laughs> you can do a little art too, but be classy. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's a way that I, I think I've found has been very, very good. I've never understood how people bring a Sharpie to them to the bathroom. To me, that was the, <laughs> I've never in my life thought, well, you know what? I need to go to the restroom. Where's my Sharpie? That's something that I've never, that has never crossed my mind. But hey, guys, I really appreciate you coming on here. Look forward to hearing from you uh, throughout the uh, throughout the season. Christina Troopy, Austin Wigerman, I'm Greg Thomas, and this was Muskie Road Rules podcast. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks you for having me. Uh, bye.